all for, uh, for coming tonight. We are in the 17th year of our Tetley Distinguished Leader Lecture Series, and you're in for a very important treat and, and opportunity tonight. Over, over the years, the series has had the great fortune of bringing some of this nation's leading uh, corporate executives to the Coles College, to the Kennesaw State University campus, and tonight, this evening, is no exception. We are very, very fortunate to have the President and CEO of one of the world's most important business publications with us tonight, and I think you will all be uh, fascinated at the insights uh, that our distinguished lecturer has for us. I want to first introduce, first of all, myself. I'm Tim Mescon, Dean of the Coles College. Want to, we have a lot of very important guests, but I want to first acknowledge and recognize our president, Dr. Dan Papp, and Dan, thank you for being here. It says a lot to have President Papp here in, uh, in terms of validating the, the very, very uh, critical role uh, of, of tonight's of tonight's program. I'll just let these folks come in and we'll, we'll get started. One of the things that the Coles College has tried to do over the last few years is provide real value-added opportunities to our students, and particularly Coles College students at the junior and senior level, part of what we call our professional program as well as our graduate students. And thanks to a, a, a wonderful friend and colleague of the Coles College, Bert Smith, and Bert, if you'll stand for a second. I'd like to recognize Mr. Smith. Bert has been with McGraw-Hill for 34 years and launched a program for Business Week a few years ago that brought Business Week uh, both into the classroom and for many of you to your apartments or to your homes. And we were one of the first half dozen business schools in the country to adopt the use of Business Week for juniors and seniors and graduate students as well as our faculty and our board members. And it's really become a critical element uh, of our partnership, of our alliance, not just with this great global enterprise, McGraw-Hill, but also in providing our students leading edge, uh, applied business information uh, on a daily basis, both through your, your home delivered subscriptions, but more importantly, what you get uh, online on a, on a daily basis. And it's really been a very, very critical part of what we do and how we do. William P. Cooper, Jr. is president and CEO of the Business Week Group. Mr. Cooper was named publisher in 1999 and president in 2000. As president of Business Week, Mr. Cooper is responsible for overseeing worldwide operations for the magazine's North American and international editions and oversees the continued expansion of the franchise for Business Week Online and Business Week Television. I should say in, in round figures, Business Week has a million subscribers who receive the publication weekly, and, and Mr. Cooper will address over 7 million distinct visitors uh, to, the, to the website. So it has an enormous influence and thought leadership in the world of business. Mr. Cooper joined Business Week in 1995 as U.S. Sales Director and was promoted to Associate Publisher in Worldwide Sales Director in 1998. He's had a distinguished career in publishing, having spent 24 years at Time, Inc., where we held a number of senior sales management positions, including Advertising Sales Manager for Sports Illustrated, Advertising Director for Life, and International Advertising Director for Time. He was also publisher of Health Magazine, part of Time, Inc.'s publishing venture group. Mr. Cooper started his career as a, media, as a media planner at Dancer Fitzgerald Sample in 1969 after serving in the U.S. Army for two years. 
spent 10 months in Vietnam, where he was awarded the Bronze Star in Air Medal with the first caliber. He holds a BA in Business Administration for, from Uppsala College in New Jersey. Mr. Cooper is also a graduate of Concordia Prep School in New York, where he serves as a corporate advisor for their international management program. Founded in, 19, in 1888, the McGraw-Hill Companies is a leading global information services provider, meeting worldwide needs with brands like Standard & Poor's, Business Week, and McGraw-Hill Education. The McGraw-Hill Corporation has more than 290 offices in 29 countries, and the faculty and staff at our Cox Family Enterprise Center have had a very important admiration for another great family enterprise for many, many years. Sales of McGraw-Hill are well in excess of $5 billion annually. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce today's Tetley Distinguished Lecturer, Bill Cooper. Thank you, uh, Dean Neskin and President Pack. Um, this is a distinct pleasure for me to be standing up here as someone talking to you on behalf of the Tetley uh, um, Lecture Series at Kennesaw State and Coles College of Business. Um, I also want to thank Terry LaBelle, who, uh, who helped put all the, uh, the moving pieces behind the scenes to get all this uh, accomplished and get us here today, so thank you. I also, again, want to thank Bert Smith, who's as much a partner for all of you as, as he is with Business Week, and Donna Jernigan, who's sitting next to him, is our Atlanta representative in the Atlanta office of Business Week for being here as well, and also helping me find the way through I-75. <laughs> That's very important. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'm, I'm challenged here now. I was told that I, I'm, I've got to finish at about 6. So this is, this is going to be challenging because I really think I have some useful information to share with you. And if you have to leave at 6, you have to leave at 6. But if we go a couple more minutes beyond that, bear with me because I really think I'll leave you with a thought or two that I think you can use in your aspiration of your career, um, and even your personal lives, so uh, bear with me. I'm going to cover the subject of marketing, because I just think that marketing is the center of the universe, no matter what your aspiration um, and what business you're going to be in. Uh, and then I'm going to touch a little bit about Business Week and the challenge that, that Business Week has, along with all the other traditional media in the media landscape today, which is quite fluid, 24-7. And then I'm going to get into the business of your careers, um, and things you should think about as a business student going forward, and also talk about the editors of Business Week um, sharing with you where they think the biggest opportunities are in the next four years for graduating business students. And then I'm going to uh, just touch a little bit about uh, the job interview and what I've learned over the years, and then maybe just a smattering of international, which I share with you, I think you'll find to be interesting. And then I'll close. So, whoops. So bear with me as we go through this. Um, and I, I've come to that. I can't wander the audience too much because if I go this way, I'll kill myself. Um, you have to know your audience. You have to know who you're talking to. So I listened to some of your professors. I talked to a couple of you out there in the audience, and I, I think what I'm going to share with you is what you want. Um, actually, about a year ago, there was a story of a... Uh, of the CEO, new CEO of this company in Illinois. And this guy, he was a bit of a brood of a guy, huge. And he was a bit of a mean kind of character if you just met him. And he, uh, it was his first meeting with his top 40 um, lieutenants, vice presidents, senior vice presidents. And he stood up in front of all of them and said at the podium and just said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking over this company. I want to see nothing but 140% energy, proactivity. I want to see elbows flying. I want to see nothing but performance. We have a lot to achieve in this new company. And then in the corner of his eye, he saw this guy leaning against the wall like this. And the guy sort of really wasn't dressed that well. And all of a sudden, to make a point, the CEO walked over to him and said, hey, you, 
uh, what do you make a week? And the guy said, well, $300. And so the CEO just took out his wallet, which if I did, all the wires would come out. <laughs> gave him $300, said, now here, here's $300. Get the hell out of here and never come back. So CEO walked back to the, port, the podium, turned to his lieutenant and said, by the way, who was that? And his vice president of HR told him it was the Domino's pizza delivery guy. <laughs> you gotta know your audience, so I, I hope I know my audience. Today. All right, marketing. Marketing is, uh, is really all about the words that I put up there on the screen. It is, it is really, for me, the lifeblood of a company. Marketing is really all about the value of a brand and the value of a company. And yes, even a university. When people uh, see Kennesaw up there on the billboard, you know, it's going to mean something to them. <coughs> um, there we go. William uh, Sonoma, you, uh, this uh, male or female in Ohio gets a catalog from William uh, Sonoma opens it up, sees something attractive in there, and goes to the store and buys a whole bunch of, uh, of um, cake, cake baking stuff that you can buy at the store. Gives the MasterCard, the email address. By the time that that customer, consumer, from William Sonoma comes back to their home, literally before they get home, in their email, is something from William Sonoma that says, by the way, you just bought these great cake pans. Here are some other utensils you can use and purchase online from our company. So Bango, print, catalog. They walk to the brick and mortar, the store, and they get back home and bingo, they've got the internet again. So that is marketing, marketing 101. Starbucks. Um, Starbucks is a classic example of, of what's going on out there in the world. They really know how to market themselves. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Howard Schultz, the CEO, and I told him, actually, I don't know if he was lucky or not, I don't think he was lucky, but it's green and black. Their logo is green and black. I, I want to share with you, if you're red, white, and blue, Business Week's red, white, and blue, Time Magazine's red, white, and blue, American Airlines is red, white, and blue. If you're red, white, and blue and you're doing business outside the United States, a little perceived challenge, right? Um, he's not. Here's an example. I, we have an annual CEO conference in Beijing every year for Business Week. We put together about 450 CEOs from all over the world. And in between one of the sessions, I slipped out to get a Starbucks. And as you can see, it's in Chinese. But notice that they do not touch the name Starbucks. Um, they leave that all alone, and they give you the translation of the menu. Now, Marketing, again, think about this, whether or not you're going to pursue a career in a specific business. Howard Schultz just made a deal with eight rental car companies in the United States so that when you or I fly into Little Rock, right, or Boise, Idaho, rent a car, and you have the GPS on the rental car, up pops little Starbucks of where you can find Starbucks within the first three miles of that airport that you've never been in before. What is that worth in sales? But what is that worth in the value of branding? Oh my God. Anyway, the value of the brand far exceeds the value of the company. I've had so many chief marketing officers that have taken that phrase and, and brought it upstairs to their chief executive officer because at any company, and yes, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, any university, Sooner or later, the lights get older, the PCs get older, the chairs depreciate. The only one thing in a company or a corporation or a university <coughs> that has the opportunity to appreciate, appreciate, is the brand. So doesn't it make sense to put money behind promoting the brand? Um, the swoosh, you know, everybody knows what Nike is. I mean, you just have to see the swoosh. You don't even have to see Nike or the double arches, right? I mean, you immediately know what it is. And in fact, by the way, McDonald's had their best year ever, best year ever, um, and even beat out Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts for the best coffee in the United States in a recent huge national wide poll. Um, they are doing fabulous. And the duck. All right, now this is sort of. Black. 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 Never thought you'd hear that, right? Um, the duck, I mean, you didn't even know much 
Dr. Bad Affleck, the insurance company, before the duck arrived. And people make that association, and they do it with a little smile on their face. And by the way, ever since um, Affleck started doing this, uh, their sales, their share of market have been, has just been unbelievable. Now, no matter what your aspiration and what area you're going to follow in the world of business, sooner or later, you're going to meet a guy like this. I promise you. Right, Donna? You're going to meet a guy like this. And he's going to say, and he may be a vendor, he may be someone you have to do business with, he may be somebody that you have to make a partnership with, and he's going to sit there and say, listen, I don't know who you are. I've never heard of your company. I don't know what you stand for. I don't know what your company's customers are. Um, this is a waste of time. <coughs> so the business of your company or your partnership, or you, if you're going to start up an entrepreneurial company, you've got to let people know what it is before you walk in to see this guy, because guess what? This guy will always be around. Business Week, the challenge of uh, a traditional media, which Dean mentioned. I mean, Business Week, the magazine's been around 77 years. Our website's really been, really only started flying about five years ago. You know, the magazine reaches a, a million subscribers. The website has seven million uniques. Um, it's been fun. But guess what? It, over the last couple years, um, you have seen a dramatic shift in the way you, all of you, all of you, and you're such an important customer of ours, have uh, attended to the way you want to get information. So if you see what's happening here, traditional media is pretty much level, and the new media is really taking off. Now catch this. Time Magazine has 3.2 million subscribers. Time Magazine's been around 100 years. Um, 41 million... I counted every one of them. 41 million Americans watched American Idol. 100, 100 million streaming videos played daily on YouTube. And 550 daily users um, on Google. And by the way, guess what? I told this to Bert. Two months ago, Time Magazine had 4 million subscribers. So what's going on here, right? Well, there's a huge media transformation. And as much as it may be scary to some people and challenging to others, in my opinion, um, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Today, that uh, studies show that 83% 80, of people intending to purchase di digital videos do so to skip the uh, commercials. Sony has just introduced the DVR blasting that allows you to change the end of a commercial, depending on how you want it. And guess what? BMW just introduced, when you buy a BMW today, they put your name into the chip of the key, and there are now billboards for BMW. As you're driving by, they'll say, Sally Smith, having a good day? Right in the middle of the billboard. Uh, you talk about a connection. You talk about a personal connection with you and a brand. Um, and yes, there are exploding billboards. Um, now, here's a, here's a question I just want to ask all of you. By the way, just to show of hands, this is a little exercise to make sure that we're all awake. First of all, how many people in this great audience, and thank you for coming tonight, um, have been to the top of uh, Kennesaw Mountain? How many? All right, 50, 60%. I was there today with Donna. Um, that was, that's fabulous up there. You can see everything, Stone Mountain, Atlanta. Um, um, okay, here we go. Does anyone in the audience have a personal blog? All right, there you go. We've got, about, we've got about 10, which is fabulous. Thank you for raising your hand, because I think it's really important for other people to see this. Um, who here displays photos on the web? Uh, it's 40%. It's fabulous. Thank you very much, because it just shows other people the way you're approaching new media. Um, does anybody here maintain their own website? Wow. Okay, Vaughn, that's great. That's about 10, 11. Um, has anybody here paid now, paid for digital content? Content. Has anybody here paid, there you go in the back of the room, paid for digital content? Not buying a product on eBay, but digital content. All right, so that's about 20. What would be an example of that? Digital content would be going back onto the Business Week or Wall Street Journal uh, website and paying $5 for an old story, archives. All right? Uh, okay, you ready for this one? This will be fun. Who here owns a landline phone? <laughs> yeah, see, 10% of the audience has a landline phone. And by the way, Dean, I already predicted that 
this industry is in for a shot because you all got cell phones with time on it like my son and guess what good luck I don't know I hope they see it coming because when it comes it's going to be painful okay how many people here this is a little fun uh, ladies and gentlemen how many people here text message and think that really only using email is just to talk to your parents <laughs> yeah come on come on come on I know I know there's more all right, all right. and here's one for you and I, I, I want you to be totally honest with me um, because every university campus I go to, I ask this question that blows me away. Um, how many here, and have listened to me, how many here watch less television than you did two years ago? Yeah, 90%. That's exactly what every university audience says. Which, uh, if I had a guy from ABC, CBS, and NBC here, every time I do that, wow, take the notes, guys. You're all going broadband on the web, and you're leaving the TV, TV behind. Obviously, none of you are in the 41 million that watch American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, onward. Business week, I just share with you, because some of you are going to get into media, media marketing. Uh, business week in the 90s, and obviously before then, was <coughs> magazine-centric. We were all about being a magazine. And you know what magazines are all about. And then in the 90s, uh, later 90s, we moved to creating products that we thought our customers wanted. But building something and hoping that they come doesn't always work. And today, as I stand here, and for all the months ahead, the business of Business Week is to follow the customer. You're the customer. Today, you want information the way you want it, when you want it, and how you want it. I have a friend of mine that gets his stock quotes on his watch. Now, this guy does not have a life, <laughs> but he wants his stock quotes on his watch. So you got to give it to him, right? So we're into all sorts of extensions, as you see here, um, all sorts of extensions to satisfy you, the customer. And we're going to continue to deliver and distribute our content, not only the editorial content, but obviously increase search so that we can get you to our information and even get into user content. So we've gone from a magazine-based centric organization to a multi-platform, multimedia strategy. And uh, it's been fun, it's been exciting, but it's challenging. And I mean, the name of the game, I learned, you know, okay, you know, I'm of a certain age, right? And I've seen a lot of things. And there are people in this room that have seen a lot more than I have. Uh, I kiddingly say, in an interview, someone said, what, What's the one thing you regret that you didn't do in your life? And I said, I should have bought more real estate. <laughs> but the one thing that I regret more, or I should I learn and I try to remind everybody, in business, the biggest lesson I, uh, I, I would have sort of wished I captured a long time ago is feedback, feedback, feedback. In New York, we once had a mayor, Edward Koch, who would walk up to people on the street and say, how am I doing? But that's all about feedback. That is all about feedback. I can assure you, when we have a subscriber that cancels a subscription, we are within 24 hours talking to that subscriber to find out why. You need to know why. You know, why are there one million less subscribers to time? You know, why are there 41 million uh, viewers of American Idol when last year there were 25 million? You gotta ask the questions to learn. Um, we had a, a wild and woolly, like many, many companies. I sat with uh, the CEO of Waste Management, and they want to project themselves as environmentally friendly, and everything they're doing is green. And you give them the business card, and there, were no, there was no green on the business card. You, you have to sort of have a complete marketing plan that fits in all together. Well, Business Week was all over the, all over the map with uh, our logo treatments, and we just launched an advertising campaign, which I just want to share with you, um, and you might get a kick out of it, you might not, but the fact is we launched it. And it was important in this age of media transformation to get a message out there and be consistent. <coughs> we wanted, to, obviously, to increase the awareness that Business Week is a, in a, an intelligent provider of business insights, to reinforce the message that Business Week content is <coughs> delivered multi-platform, and also to create a buzz about our, uh, our, our, our advertising constituents. And we created this logo. And this logo now we use, even when you get an email from me, 
the bottom of the email will have the business logo and all these little icons. And the icons tell you real quickly that we've got podcasts, we're on TV, we're print, we are mobile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really been cool. It's really taken off and everybody connects with it. Uh, you can get it real fast. We also wanted to create a creative execution that basically said Business Week is for smart people, uh, Business Week stimulates ideas, Business Week readers are successful, affluent, and, uh, and again, Business Week is accessible, concise, useful, and here's our campaign. We took the brain, and it, while it's running in print, it's also running in, in bus stops, and it's on top of cabs, and it's at airports in about 10 different cities in the country. And you'll see, uh, you'll see it right there. Now there's an example. Now here's a good one. See, this is what happens before, if you're not a Business Week reader, that's the brain. But if you read Business Week, you get that in the back, back row? See what happens? It's pretty cool, right? The brain just gets bigger. Uh, it's hard to see, but it says before and after underneath it. And then this is an outdoor board. Honk if you're a thinker. Again, with the Business Week logo and the uh, little icons. And then repair the damage done by reality TV. <laughs> and that's an outdoor ad, again, with the little icons. So you keep, you tell them once, you tell them twice, you tell them three times. Uh, career plan. All right, I'm doing pretty well here, so bear with me as far as time is concerned. Uh, career planning is... Uh, is one of the reasons why you're going to this fine university, because ultimately you're going to get out there in the world and um, and, and make a difference in whatever advocation or pursuit that you're going to follow. And and I share with you, you know, um, a raindrop does not go down a window pane straight. So one's thoughts and plans and career aspirations, you know, you got to be flexible, you got to be agile, because you never know. What you're thinking about today may be different four or five years from now, but that's okay, that's okay. The one thing that I just share with you is, if you can, to follow, to follow your passion. If you can. It's the best combination. It is the best combination of all worlds. If you're interested in, uh, if you're interested in baseball, hey, pursue it. If you're interested in uh, health care and want to make a difference for the population, <laughs> Do it. There's ways to do it. That's what's great about this country. I mean, if you really, really set your goal, if you really set your goal, you can do it. But, but follow your passion. Um, it's really important. You know, if you want to get into fashion, believe me, this would be the country to get involved in fashion. And there's ways to do it. Um, so I, I, I think that follow your passion is one of my biggest messages when I sit with people, counseling, young middle of your career, whatever, you know, let's see if we can connect you with your passion, because if you can connect you with your passion, it comes out in your pores, comes out in your productivity, and you bounce out of bed every morning with a smile on your face, and guess what? 80% of Americans don't bounce out of bed with a smile on their face. They're on a job, in a job that, number one, they're stuck in, or number two, they're doing just to put food on the table, or number three, they're not marketable at other places, or number four, they're handcuffed. You know, the company's made a deal that uh, you can't leave. Follow your passion. Business Week um, has launched a, an annual, this September, Business Week launched an annual edition, special edition, which has a web application on businessweek.com um, that talks about the 50 companies that would be great to start a career with. Doesn't mean you have to start a career with them. It's just that we're saying, based on a whole bunch of criteria, these are pretty cool companies to start a career. And if you want to follow that uh, tomorrow, the next day, or next week, go to businessweek.com, and under the channel careers, just hit careers, and you'll see uh, this offering. It makes for some really interesting reading. I thought I'd share with you the prospects of, for graduating business students over the next four years. Uh, this may be of interest to you. And... Um, there's no way that you're not going to read ahead with me, but I think I'm going to hit it anyway. Whoops. Uh, 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 uh. The bias. Help.
job interview. Um, let's just do this for a second. I mean, I've learned a lot, and I think I can wander. Um, you only have one chance at a company. Okay, you, you, so you pick a company. XYZ company. You have one shot at that interview. Sure, you may talk to another company, but you got one shot at this one interview. So you want to show up ahead of time. A lot of people forget that you have to go through security at many companies in many major cities. In order to get upstairs, the security line might be long. Don't forget that. Uh, obviously, presentable, no linguine on your tie or skirt, right? Uh, watch your body language. You know, I had a big uh, conversation with my son. I actually had a big conversation with one of my directs, one of my direct executives, who had a hard time interviewing in McGraw Hill because he sat on the chair. He sat back on the chair. He was sort of laying back on the chair while he was interviewing. I told my son, you sit at the very edge of the chair where you're literally almost falling off the chair because there's no way in God's green earth that you can fall back. You're leaning forward. You are now focused. You're showing attention. You're riveted on the interviewer. It's a great little tip. Don't fall off the chair, but um, here's one for you. When you walk into someone's office, I personally think, you want to get that job? You be the one that throws the icebreaker. Right now, an icebreaker, you know, I mean, traditionally, you know, the interviewer is going to ask you the question. If you get, if you're fortunate enough to get into someone's office, that's magical. Because in somebody's office, you can find out if they have skiing pictures, if they have a large family, 
if they have, if they like dogs, if they like golf, you, now I know it's tough sometimes if you're a little shy, you be the one that throws that first question. And I got news for you. I walk in, I really want this job. I want to hit a home run with this interview. The guy's got a picture of a dog there. I'm going to say, I love dogs. That's a beautiful dog. <laughs> and even if you don't like dogs. <laughs> It gets, it gets the other side of the desk a little off balance, and all of a sudden, you're a real person. I did that with my CEO when I first interviewed. He had hockey pictures all over the place of his kid. He said, hey, I, hey, hey, let's talk hockey for a minute. It's the greatest little tip I can ever share with you with regard to the interview. All right, now on a more serious note. Um, we live in a day and age where in two seconds, you can find out all you ever want to know, not only about the person that you're interviewing, like, I could check on the dean, he could check on me. Uh, you want to Google the interviewer? And uh, talk to people that have the similar kind of job, so you really know the nuances of the job. And you also want to uh, be prepared, because I think it's the best, best question when they say, how are you going to make a difference versus anybody else I hire? Boy, think about that, because if you can answer that, you're going to get the job. Um, if you ask a good question about the, uh, the company that you're joining, uh, boy, that is really cool. You know, I just looked at your annual report. I see all the offices you have around the world. I'm really surprised you don't have one in Sydney. Um, is there a reason for that? Well, it gets the interviewer a little thrown on. You know, he gets to start talking about his company, and anybody that's working for the company has to have pride in the company, and then all of a sudden he gets, he gets the, to give you a lot of credit and be confident. Don't sit back in the chair. Um, now, think for a second before answering a question, because you only have one shot, right? Now, here's one for you. Donna's going to shake her head. At a very strategic interview that I had in my life, and I really wanted this job, the last question this guy asked me, and this was from Star Wars, he said, Bill, how would the last three sentences of your obituary read? And I'm interviewing for a job. <laughs> I'm not going to die tomorrow. I'm not going to die in his office. What the hell is he doing? So I had, I had like, you know, hey, this guy's a big, important guy. Uh, I had to answer this question, which I really thought he got from some correspondence school. I said to myself, where the hell did he get this question? So one of the first little tricks is, you quickly, when you get something that you think is completely out of left field, you just automatically say, oh, wow, well, that is a great question. <laughs> because it gives you a minute to think. <laughs> so I said, wow, that's a great question. And I said to myself, how the hell am I going to answer this question? <laughs> and so I did, though. I, I, mean, I came back and I said, um, well, uh, I, I would hope that the person that's currently going to be my supervisor, if I get this great job, will be promoted further in the corporation, and I will be able to run this great brand that I'm interviewing with, ultimately, and then after that go on to some philanthropic endeavors. I thought of that myself. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I got the job. <laughs> but that one is ooh, one of those ooh, ooh ones. Um, anyway, follow up as soon as possible. Now, you're looking at a guy who, uh, and some, some people here can relate to this, uh, we didn't have the internet for a quick email back saying thank you very much, da 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 da, you could do that. You could do that while you're going down the elevator. That's cool. The sooner, the sooner somebody gets back to me after an interview, boy, they get a point. Uh, back in my days when I was trying to get a Sports Illustrated job, um, I got back to my office and my friend said, Bill, not only do you send a letter, follow-up letter to this guy, you send a special delivery. So those days, special delivery, it meant, you know, I'm showing him that I care about this job more than somebody that would just send a letter, uh, a letter just with regular mail. So again, just follow up, follow up, follow up. And be, be prepared to explain you why you would leave your current job, which is sometimes a really interesting question. And last but not, because we have uh, an innovation specialist here tonight for the university, um, be creative, all right? Be creative, okay? Here's a cool one. Let's see what happens. My son, uh, who is at another university, um, and a very bright friend of his who was at, at Wharton, and his friend called and said, Mr. Cooper, could I just come over on a Saturday and spend a moment, because I'm sort of debating about 
two companies, you know, to go after because I'm a graduating senior. And I said, come on over, come on over around 9, 30, 10 o'clock on Saturday, and we'll chat. And so he sat down, and he said, well, it's either going to be this company, or Prudential, or Wells Fargo. And I said, all right, well, you know, my opinion, you know, you're a really bright student. Uh, I like Wells Fargo a lot, not that I don't like Prudential, but Wells Fargo, dang, get to work in San Francisco. And he said, well, my problem is, Mr. Cooper, I can't get through. I, I make phone calls. I send emails. I can't, I can't get through to the head of HR. I said, all right, now let's see, if, let's see how this answer comes. Does anybody know the little icon, the little logo of Wells Fargo? You see a Wells Fargo ad? Or you, huh? Stagecoach. Stagecoach. It's a little stagecoach, right? And guess what? I said, Jason, you leave my home, you go directly to a toy store, you buy a little stagecoach, you wrap it in a letter that says, I urgently want to make a connection with you. I have studied your company upstairs and down. I feel that your company has so many roads of opportunity. Get it? Stagecoach? <laughs> right? Get it? That we would make a tremendous uh, mutual partnership. Um, Guess what? He sent a Better Express. This is really strange. He actually built a stagecoach. <laughs> I told him for ten dollars he'd go buy a stage, a little stagecoach. He built the stagecoach, sent it out, and guess what? The next day, the following day, after he emailed uh, FedEx did it. Evidently, he, called, he he made a point to come back to my house. And Mr. Cube, you won't believe this. The senior HR director turned to his assistant and said. Get that goddamn kid in here, pay for his airfare, get him into my office. Now, okay, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to take all the receivers and throw them into the end zone and throw that pass. Hey, they're not answering you anyway. What do you got to lose, right? And so guess what? It's creative. It's different. You figure out a way to break away from the crowd, right? I had a very successful salesperson. You have a... You have a fabulous um, uh, sales selling um, course and um, program here at Kennesaw. Um, my, my colleague who was in sales would, after a presentation, would send his customer that he wants to do business with, um, this was Grant Getz, a re big red Everlast, both of them, a punching glove, punching glove, boxing gloves, and said, we are ready, we are ready to be a heavyweight fighter for your marketing program, da 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 da, da. and he got the business. One of my favorite stories, I, I don't know if I have time, but I'll just do the Starbucks. Starbucks card, you interview with somebody, you interview with somebody, you really want that job at Ralph Lauren, or you really want that job at Xerox, or you really want that job at uh, Southern. After the follow-up, you know, I'm sure you do the email, but send them a letter, go out and buy a Starbucks, $10 Starbucks card. And the letter says, I do not need caffeine to get excited to be working in the brand management program or the accounting program at your company. But please enjoy the Starbucks card. Compliments of me as a reflection of my energy and my high for the potential of working with you. Um, many companies will accept, trust me, these days, Gifts over $25 are returned to you, but a Starbucks card for $10, you know, believe me, it'll slip into their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, a, by the way, that's probably the best thought I had today for you. Um, <laughs> I share it with you. All right, now, listen to me carefully. It's so important. I share this with you after 39 years of experience. You made a decision to come here today to listen to me. I thank you. You made a decision of what to put on today. You made a decision to attend Kennesaw. You know, you all can make decisions. But guess what? 80% of the managers around the world can make a decision. 20% can. Right? Steve Jobs doesn't hit a home run every time. But he makes a decision. Let's go with the iPod. Um... Let's, uh, let's go with Tiger Woods, Nike, way back when. 
I know Jack could, you know, Josh could not be the winner that he is. Make a decision. You got to make a decision. If you're going to be in business and you'll ultimately get to a point where either you're not in management, I'm not going to get you into management real fast because we're just getting into the business, but making a decision, really important. Just make it. Don't wobble. Don't waffle. Make it. Live with it. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, oh, guess what? There'll be another day. Um, really important in business. Ethics. Uh, the dean mentioned that I am uh, uh, an advisor to Concordia College up in New York on their uh, international program. And they called me and they said, Bill, uh, we'd like a statement from you from our marketing, pro uh, marketing brochure because we're really going to emphasize ethics and transparency. It's probably the number one subject <coughs> of all companies today. Honesty, ethics, transparency. Um, you can see how we do business. We're not hiding anything, right? We're not backdating options. Da, 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 da. So I had, I would, they asked me to write up something and they put it in the brochure. I'm just going to read it to you. <clears throat> Being ethical in my career helped me because I always follow the rules and I never promised anything that I couldn't deliver. That's me. If you overpromise and don't deliver, your trust is broken. Uh, this is a lesson in life. I have eliminated employees uh, who have cheated the company, who have falsified documents, or have misrepresented the company or its resources over these 39 years. Um, being ethical, honest, and trustworthy will always be the key attributes of a successful uh, man or woman. No matter what your career path, not acting in an ethical manner will ultimately end your career. Your reputation, your reputation, is the most valuable asset that you have. So a tip to me, keep it ethical. I'm sure you will. Now, the world of business is, is actually very, very small. I know you've heard of the New York Stock Exchange. Um, I know you've heard of the, uh, the NASDAQ. I know you've heard of the American Stock Exchange. Or you, I know you've heard of the Chicago Stock Exchange. Uh, how many, you want to take a guess how many stock exchanges there are in the world? How about the back row back there? 25, 35? Somebody want to guess how many stock exchanges? It's always tough on a large crowd. There's 85 stock exchanges in the world. And the world is small. So, a little touch here on doing business internationally, which I just share with you. Um, where you sit. When you go to Asia, little things you can learn, I'm just going to share with you that you might find interesting. Right now, there's basically about one or two or three people that if we had a, if we had a Japanese business meeting right now, um, anybody want to guess where the most senior person would be sitting in a Japanese business meeting? Facing the exit. Facing the exit, correct. Although there's no one facing the exit here. So, okay, in the middle. yeah, in the middle back. So, guess what? Uh, President Pat is actually right there in the group that's furthest from the door, facing the exit, but furthest from the door. Right? It goes back to samurai times when they attacked the castle, everybody had their head cut off as you're going up until the last man, who was the senior man, and then ultimately he does it, but at least he was the last to go. <laughs> So when I, when I go over to Asia, and it, it, even Korea, Japan, Singapore, um, I always wait to be seated, sat, because they usually put the most senior man, the furthest from the door, facing the door, the most junior people are always um, the closest to the door, because theoretically they're the defenders, you know, the first ones. And uh, it is, it's fascinating, because you can violate a culture, a business meeting, if you just sat down in the wrong chair. So anyway, I also put in uh, your business card. Now, uh, we passed some business cards around today. Your business card. Be careful. It doesn't matter if it's Asia or Europe. It doesn't even matter in the United States. When you get a business card, if you have a meeting, I suggest you put in three people, four people, five people. Put it down in the way that they're sitting so that I can look here and see this is Ken and this is Sally. Okay, so put that down in front of you. If you're not sitting in front of a table, if you're just meeting them, 
for lunch or dinner or drinks or whatever or in the hallway. Um, just put it away. Put it away. It is a, uh, what do you call it? It is an insult to hold the card and start playing with it or flicking it or picking your teeth with it. <laughs> you knew that, though, didn't you? Um, just a put it away because it is an absolute insult. If you want to get the business, if you want to create the relationship, put the business card away. And also how you talk. And I just shared this with you. That I'd be willing to bet that, uh, hey, 60% of McDonald's profits come from outside the United States. 40% of Starbucks profits come from outside the United States. I'd be willing to bet that 38% mm, of you are going to do business ultimately with somebody outside the United States. Watch your American slang phrases. I sat there in a meeting um, with my editor-in-chief, who's <coughs> smarter than I am. And we were, we were in China, and he said, he said, I'm, I'm the cleanup hitter today in front of all these Chinese people. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I mean, you know, you got you to gotta respect the culture that you're in front of. I mean, I'm, I'm with a whole bunch of French executives, and one of my American teammates says, let's cut to the chase. Well, they, they didn't know what in God's name my guy was talking about. So let's get to first base. Let's hit a home run. Let's make a beeline. I heard that one. I, you know, we were in uh, we were in Stockholm with Volvo, and one of my colleagues said, "We're going to make a beeline back and send you all the information you need." We're in Stockholm, man. There's it's too cold to have beeline. <laughs> it's snowing. Uh, <laughs> they had no idea what the hell he was talking about. So I just share with you, um, cleanup hitter. Even a quarterback. Anyway, um, the world is a small. And um, the, the business of business and the opportunities in business are absolutely huge. So I, I leave with you um, uh, a couple final remarks. Number one, if you can, if you can, follow your passion. I mean, I have loved every day I have ever worked. But I've also managed my career. You know, I said, I want to get to here. I want to do that. I want to do this. And you figure out how to get there. And maybe I'm lucky. But I worked at it. Um, I also never gave up. Follow your, cash, uh, follow your passion. Um, make a difference. Right? I mean, the reason why you're going to get promoted and someone else is not is because you're going to make a difference. You're going to figure out how to do that. It'll come in time. The other message is to embrace change. So it doesn't matter if you're going to be a lawyer, a consultant, a doctor, a dentist, an artist an information technology wizard, you got to embrace change. You've got to be agile. Things are always going to change. Always going to change. Don't be, don't be rigid. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Um, and then last, and, and last but not least is, um, is just respect the cultures that, uh, that you're doing business in. Uh, you know, again, back to your program of successful selling, all you ever want to do, even in, in friendships, relationships, is to create a positive environment. Now, we call it create a positive selling environment. You know, someone's not going to buy from you if they don't like you. Someone's not going to buy from you if you come off like you're arrogant or you've got an attitude, you know, where all you're doing is showing inflexibility. You know, the wonderful world works, you know, with honey, not... Uh, not the other stuff, and uh, I leave that with you. And I and I have to thank all of you very much for coming today tonight. I really appreciate your time. And if you have the opportunity to go to businessweek.com, our website, or our weekly syndicated television show on Sunday, uh, or our magazine. Which, by the way, the magazines are not going to go away in the media landscape. Um, we may very well actually in, uh, create more magazines, but like we have a small business magazine that's targeted to small business entrepreneurs. And we may vary, but we're testing an innovation magazine. And there's going to be other targeted, segmented, uh, vertical magazines. So magazines aren't going to go away. But the world is clearly all about being integrated. 
Um, so anyway, I thank you for listening, and I thank you for your time, and uh, good night. Thank me again for, thank Mr. Cooper again for being with us here today. What an honor it is for us to have President and CEO of really the leading business resource in the world on campus today. And Bill, we thank you very much for being here and appreciate our partnership with Business Week. Thank you, very, Mr. Williams, and very fabulous. graduate students who have access to this, this great product. Then it was a, a pleasure for me this morning when I, I went to the Resource Center, which is a product that Business Week provides to faculty who use Business Week in their classes. I was looking through the marketing uh, segment of this week, and this Resource Center is created every week, and it's presented to faculty before the magazine hits the newsstand, there were summaries and insights by one of our marketing faculty, uh, Dr. Hope DeCornu, who participates in that panel that looks at these articles weekly and summarizes and presents this information to faculty worldwide. So it's a great resource for you. It's a great resource for faculty. And Bill and Donna and Bert, we thank you for this great partnership that we've had for many years now with Business Week in McGraw-Hill. Thank, Thank you. you.